Hello. Hello, Brian. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. Pete, your microphone is on mute. Maybe you can't hear us. Pete's leaving. Brian, you ran him off. What? You ran Pete off. Say that one more time. You ran Pete off. I guess I did. <laughs> so were you at the meeting on Saturday? Uh, I, w I was not. Uh, uh, I, uh, I, I was uh, recovering from, from the crud. I'm sorry. Glad you're uh, better. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. It's, hey, it, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of benefits, uh, uh, to, um, having a, having a, uh, a young nephew, um, and getting to, uh, spend a lot of time with him. Um, you can keep up with the sicknesses. Yes. You, if he catches something, you're going to catch it. Um, and and sometimes it, it uh, involves uh, ri uh, uh, writing the uh, uh, or uh, yeah uh, it, it, it involves things coming out of uh, places that you didn't think existed. Um, Brian, can you <laughs> see my, can you see my picture? Uh, yes, I can. Can you see Brazelton in the background? Um, I can see a building. In your background, I have no idea what it is. Okay, that's all right. Let's try Pete again. Hey, Pete. There he is. Good evening. How are you? How are you, Pete? What's your What's your background there? That's the building in Brazelton. You, you oh, seen that? gotcha. Uh, so I've got it reversed, I guess. Say what? Said I have the lettering reversed. How many? What? Yes, yeah, sir. I have the 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 picture is reversed. It should be oh, turned the other way so you can read it. I got you. I've been to downtown Brazelton before. That's an uh, old town. <clears throat> yeah, this is that big building there. I forget what's in. I guess the antiques are in that building. Yeah, wonder if it used to be a railroad depot. I'm sorry. I said I wonder if it used to be a railroad depot. Brian, I don't think that one is that the railroad depot. I think is across the street. Okay. Well, it was just a shot in the dark. <laughs> the, um, although this could, this is an awfully big building to have been a uh, a rail depot, but one of the there's a. Um, restaurant across the street that looks like it may have been a, a depot. Okay. Okay, Pete, so what was this award that you got from the district governor on Saturday? Uh, basically, it was for the, and she, did, she had it, but I couldn't get it. It was for a guiding lion certificate. Okay. I don't, I wouldn't call it an award, but well, she said you were certain there was some sort of recognition because she said you were certified again for like I've the third been, or fourth time. I've been certified probably five or six times, I guess. 
fact, I used to certify people as the GLT. Okay. But it's a, it's a, you know, a good thing to be for a, a club or the district. You learn a lot. You have to take a test and go through guiding lion uh, online. You can do it or print it out and take it, send it in, but it doesn't cost nothing. But it's just good information. And a guiding line, of course, helps uh, new clubs. Yeah. Well, she certainly has uh, developed a, a kinship with Angela, hasn't she? For who? Angela Williams. <laughs> Angela, um, <clears throat> I guess you're lucky you didn't meet her. She was in our club, but um angela has a way of putting herself out front she likes notoriety which is not bad if you're doing something and she's 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 doing some things you know she's the leo uh, chairman of the district and uh, uh she works with uh, diabetes and things like that so she stays pretty busy yeah was was I supposed to call? Were you going to call Lisa, or was I supposed to call Lisa? Who? Lisa. Lisa. Uh, <clears throat> I was going to. I didn't. I didn't have her phone number with me. But I will. I will try and if I can get her tonight, it'll be eight o'clock. So I might try and run her down. Hello, Brian. Hey, how's it going? Going well, how about you? Doing fine. Just uh, down at uh, one of my other offices in Florida. It's a little windy out here, so. Well, man, it's affecting your video. It's got straight lines going through it. Uh, I, I have about 8% battery hey. left on my phone, so I can't do it. <laughs> well, they, uh, uh, 8%, man. Pete, you better hurry up. Brian's not going to be able to get to the end of the meeting. <laughs> now we got BD and we got BO. I like this, man. <laughs> so where are you in Florida, Brian? I'm in uh, Miami. Oh, wow. Nice. Cold there today? <laughs> oh, it's 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 uh it's it's, it's about uh seventy degrees right now, but definitely uh, a little bit windy, and we're about to get back to the office. But um, I'm just down visiting another one of the offices. My uh, my sister, you're with the exception of Pete, you guys are too young to remember this, but Vale had a gondola crash back in the late seventies, and my mm. sister was living there. They were kind of like snow. Uh, snow vagabonds but anyway the the uh, business in Vail dried up overnight when that gondola crashed killed I think like 15 people anyway so they moved back to my brother-in-law's hometown in Miami uh, <laughs> and brought all their they didn't sell their clothes brought all their clothes with them and it turned out after they got down there it snowed in Miami <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> uh, if you guys don't know it, they, they don't have furnaces or heaters in Miami. Uh, and people certainly don't have clothes for snow. Oh, no, not at all. <clears throat> Do we have anybody else coming tonight? Do you know? Mm, Don said he was coming, but, you know. Don's here. Who? Oh, Don's in Miami? No, Don oh, is oh, in Miami. Don't you see Don in the corner? No, I don't see Don. Oh, He's here. Wow. I, he, I see him. I see him. Okay, let me I say hi, Don. Hey, Don. Hey. All I see is blurred lines. You two are on the screen right now. I don't know how you don't see him. But then, so, so is Brian O on here too? Yes. Okay. 
No, I'm not. All I see is myself and uh, Pete, and I see squiggly lines for, for Don. Well, I beg your pardon. Okay, well, I'm glad, I'm glad I realized you, I figured out you're here now, Don. But hey, I guess I'm here. Did, Pete. Did I give you a core? Well, <clears throat> well, if nobody else is coming, let's go ahead and get started. I've got uh, almost five after seven. Okay. <clears throat> Are y'all ready with that? <clears throat> yeah, we're, yeah. we're let, let, let's let's go. This is coming. So let's go ahead and call the uh, meeting to order. And um, I'm going to ask uh, Lion Don if he would say the pledge for us, please. Yeah. And Lion, Lion Don, if you would just go ahead and say the pledge and we'll just kind of mouth it. Right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. You got it, buddy. Hey, Don. <laughs> I didn't do so well last week, last time. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were there? Hey. Uh, you were there when I flubbed it up? Oh, no. What did you, I don't know what you mean. I was talking about last week when I signed into the meeting that was this week. Oh uh, yeah, well, you, that's what you missed was Tom. Tom couldn't remember the pledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was concentrating. <laughs> now, I'll go ahead and give the invocation if that's all right with everybody. Yep. Go ahead, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on this meeting, Lord. We ask that you be with us in any decisions that we may be making tonight, Lord, and. Uh, we just uh, ask for your watch care, Lord. Bless all of our members, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, ask for uh, agenda approval. Anybody? So moved. Uh, I, I move we approve the agenda. Second. Second. All right. All approved. All in favor. Aye. Aye. The ayes have it above Brian's nose. Uh, do we need a tail twister tonight? Do we need our tails twisted? Well, if we, if we, if we, uh, I, I think I have an interesting one, but if you, uh, if we skip the tail twister, you probably, uh, save 10 minutes and get us out in time for ice cream at eight. And get, ice, and get to ice cream time faster. <laughs> still got 45 minutes. We don't have to go 45 minutes, Pete. <laughs> no, no, we don't. Uh, <laughs> All right, go ahead, Tom. There's what, just five of us anyway, so. Okay, so let's, um, this is one of those ponderable things here. Now, a young man named John enlists with, his, with many of his friends at their local army recruitment office. They end up in war. They're all in the same unit. And one day on patrol, the unit is ambushed and taking heavy losses. Um, the uh, several are wounded critically. John makes, uh, despite all the heavy gunfire, John goes out and rescues a number of people uh, while trying to combat, help combat the, uh, the enemy and is in the process wounded and still continues on to save people and fight the enemy. He eventually uh, kills all the enemy thereby saving all of his comrades. Um, now, the, uh, for his efforts, he's awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, and, and since all, most of the people in his unit were from his hometown, um, they honor him with a statue. Now, pretty, you know, nice story. Uh, you th does everybody agree that's probably a, a good scenario? I mean, did they honor him with a statue for what he did? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Now imagine the same, it's the same. Imagine it's not World War II, it's not World War I, it's the Civil War. The statue is erected for what he did on the battlefield, not what he was fighting for, not, you know, none of that. It was erected for what he did on the battlefield and saving his comrades. The question, of course, is in this day of where we are tearing down statues, who should be in charge of making those decisions? <coughs> Mention that with a 59 and a half foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. The, the decision shouldn't be made by the mob. Pardon? The decision should not be made by the mob. Right. Well, the, and, and the point of the story is we never know what, you know, but I shouldn't say we never know, but so many times statues are torn down without knowing what the story is. And, you know, and I think not all, but certainly a lot of the Civil War statues that was played a part. But uh, but what about you, B.O.? You have any thoughts on it? Who me? No, Brian O. Is oh. Brian O. Still online? I'm sorry, I am uh, having some people hearing. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm outside right now. Okay, so you didn't, you couldn't hear the story, Brian? No, sir. Okay, we'll give you a break. I'll send you a synopsis of it. Okay. <laughs> what, what do you think, Pete? I believe, uh, you know, that they ought to use any of these kind of statues or uh, significant things that people are wanting to tear down now as learning situations, history. Let's go back in the history and tell them what these people actually did to deserve that rather than just go and tear it down. Right. Now, was, was it right at that time? Hey, it was what it was, right? We need to learn from those kind of things. You start tearing history down, you don't have any history. I asked my good buddy over here, Mr. Don. He uh, plays a Civil War reenactor, and he can tell you that a, a lot of these uh, statues are really they're they're worthwhile. Now we may we may not understand why they're there, but I think there's a great history behind why they are there. And we need to learn that. Yeah. Well, good deal. And, and I, I agree. That's the whole point. I have, I have one. I have one. I, I do have one thing to say. Um, I you know I I believe that there may be value. Um, in um, our our faults, our black our black eyes should be erected as statues, and we should be forced to go look at it so that we do not repeat it. One day a year, we should all be forced to go look at them and our black eyes so that we do not do that stuff again. Interesting. Okay, that's all right. Anybody else have anything to say? That's it for me. Okay, well, with that, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, uh, Secretary's report, line time. Uh, I move that we accept the Secretary's report and uh, we forego the reading of such. All right, I'm I'm assuming that everybody got Tom's um, newsletter with all that information in it. So, um, do I have her here a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, let's go on to old business now. Membership <laughs> report line, Brian. Um, I I uh. I do not have anything uh, any uh, anything additional uh, at this period of time. We uh, we we still have uh, until until June to uh, to add add new members uh, uh, and and they uh, uh, not pay the uh, the um, filing fee of thirty five dollars. Okay. <clears throat> um, anybody have? 
any anybody uh, a possible new member that you're working on? Nobody. All right, like Brian said, we we do have about three months or so to get some new members in here before July first, uh, the uh, last day of June. So I think it uh, it would behoove every member of our club to. Uh, to try and bring uh, a, at least one new member in. We've got 17 now, I believe, with uh, uh, with our new member, Brian, Lion Brian. So uh, let's keep working on some. Let's not all leave it into Brian Donegan's hands either, okay? I think it's a, it's, it's a total club um, that we ought to be working on that just one thing, all right? We're all responsible. On the Atlanta Herring Specialty Club, um, we're still working on that. Uh, I haven't heard from any of their members here in the last week or so, but I need to make a call tomorrow to their vice president. But uh, <clears throat> I don't have a date right now. I don't think they have formulated a date as when the... Uh, the new club is going to be chartered. Um, so we just keep this on there and try and keep uh, up to date on it as much as we can. The district cabinet meeting was last uh, Saturday. It was kind of an interesting meeting. They had like 60 people there over in Winder at the Winder Clubhouse. Um, and uh, they did vote for our new cabinet for next year. We will have a new uh, district governor, Dr. Varghese. Uh, the the uh, new officers, first vice district is uh, Steve, uh, what's his last name? Brian? Helweg. Huh? Helweg. Yeah. Steve Helweg. Yeah, from uh, Athens Club, one of their Athens clubs. And then um, our one of our past district tail twister uh, is the third, second I, vice president. Nice. So, who's that? We've got some new cabinet members coming on. That's the way it works every year. Uh, those will be the uh, 21, 22 officers from our district. Okay. Um, as far as the scout building goes, I sent out <clears throat> sent out to Tom. I, I got a letter from a different guy down there in uh, Lawrenceville who had come up with some ideas and and some proposals and want us to let us know what he could do. Um, I sent that out to Tom and uh, asked to you know pass it out. And Tom's been busy. I think we all have doing things, but it didn't didn't get where it needed to go. I think, Tom, you sent it back to uh, Catherine and Brian tonight? I did. Yes. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll get with that fella and just tell him that we're, we're still working on it, trying to get our people together. I don't think and, we're in. And, 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 in a, and it, probably, it ought to be mentioned that, you know, right now we're not, uh, we're not ready to meet in person yet. Uh, you know, we're, we're you know, we're uh, you know, several months out from that from that uh, you know, being the case. Uh, uh, I, I believe uh, with, with the uh, current situation, anyway. So, well, uh, you might want to put that. That's that's the uh, reason for that. Uh, you know, one of the. Uh, questions on there you can add put an addendum to that brian um how you feel about that and then when when uh, the four or five of us get together to discuss that and go over these things and we can uh have a meeting with that gentleman and uh make all that information known okay okay all right so food distribution I made a call up to uh, Michigan today. The people that are handling that, they're there. I think they're out of Grand Rapids. Uh, a company called Van Sulcoma Produce. Uh, by you, you, if I pronounce that right, it's very easy to tell that they're uh, Dutch. 
a lot of Dutch folks up there around Grand Rapids and Holland area. But uh, they just got the approval to go through March uh, and, and April, I think. But my thing is, I'd, I'd like to shoot for May. I don't think we have anything really going in May. May would be probably a much better uh, weather-wise, uh, not too overly hot, not too uh, cool. The only thing I think that would mess us up would be rain. And uh, if that did come, then I guess we'd still be out there in the rain handing out groceries, okay? But that's what I'm looking at right now. If anybody has uh, anything other than that, um, I just, uh, some of, several of us were out there last year when it was hot as Hades out there in the 90 some degrees, it was pretty tough. So, uh, hopefully we can keep a, away from that. Even in May, it could be warm, but I don't think it's going to be 95 degrees like it was last July. Okay. Anybody yeah, I think, anything I think added? Brian O had the other extreme. Huh? I think Brian O had the other extreme. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, Ryan, wasn't it pretty cold your weekend? Yeah. Go on, Pete. I did, he probably doesn't hear me. Okay. Oh, no, uh, I can hear you. I was just muted twice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was cold your weekend? Yeah, Brian and his uh, team went over there and, and helped the uh, rotary out, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, we sure did. It was It was definitely as cold as it could be that weekend. <laughs> um, or that, that week rather, but, um, you know, everyone was able to get by and as long as we kept moving, it was, it wasn't too bad. Okay. Well, so we've done the two extremes now. I like Pete's idea of doing the in between. Okay. Most of my guys, uh, moved from Florida. So, uh, we're, we're happy with hot. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, again, we're, we're looking at, at a May. A Saturday in May to do this and uh, I think it gives us plenty of time um, we've got a place to do it um, a lot of my church members um, came out last time they got us a lift truck to uh, forklift to come and got it out of the uh, 18 wheelers so we did we did good and uh, looking forward to uh, doing that again this year so any other um, Comments on that? Mm -hmm. uh, nothing to add uh, for, for me. All right. They're doing this. She told me today when I talked with her last time I talked, they, they were they were having to contact contact the um, uh, what is it the uh, USDA uh, group that's doing this. They had to do it like every three months, get a three month contract. Now they're doing it on a monthly basis. So I'm thinking when we get into April, I, I will, about mid April, I will call her maybe the beginning of April and see, can we go ahead and set a date for May and see how that goes. But I don't think we have any anything going, you know, as far as service projects in May for our club, do we? No. All right. Just golf oh. trip meetings. All right. The other thing is that I did call. Uh, this is not on the agenda, but I just got this information yesterday about the um, Gwinnett Stripers uh, baseball game that we have done in the past. We didn't do it last year because of COVID. But they do have a, a schedule come out. The guy sent me the schedule. And uh, so I said, I'm going to run it through the board tonight and see if we are. Now, I'm not I'm not worried about a date right now. So don't worry about that. We'll, we'll come up with a date if we decide to do it. But um, uh, when we did this last and, and uh, Brian Oaken, um, this thing with the Braves baseball game, uh, we sell tickets, not the Braves, but the Stripers baseball game. We sell tickets 
we have several Lions clubs. In fact, we could get the Rotary or Kiwanis in on this too, but we have several Lions clubs that sell a lot to their members. And, um, and then what happens, every ticket each club sells, uh, they're responsible for writing a check to the Georgia Lions camp. That's who we have done this for the last several years. Um, and then we, they, they pay, they can pay our club one check for all the tickets they sold and, uh, they get less $5 for every ticket. So what happens is say their club sold 10, 10 tickets, their club gets credit or keeps $5. That's 50 bucks that they would send to the Georgia Lions camp. So if we had, again, if we had, uh, 10 Lions clubs, and uh, say they sold 100 um, tickets to the Stripers game, the camp would end up getting like $500 um, overall. I think, I think the last time we did it, the camp got, got over, uh, over $1,000. Yeah, and Brian, to be clear, in case you didn't know, the camp is for the blind. That's oh, a George I was just Lions. saying we've got some baseball fans over at my office, and I'm pretty sure we'd be able to uh, to, to move some tickets that way. Good deal. Awesome. Yeah, it's a Georgia Lions um, camp down in Waycross, Georgia, is is where it is. So all the clubs in the state pretty much support them. And if they don't, I I uh, I I uh, you know I go sick them. <laughs> so uh, that's all I have as far as old business under new business um, Tom put down here district news under Lion Bryan well, I was assuming I, I was assuming at the, that time that Lion Brian was there on Saturday, which made a I got that wrong, obviously. But what I wanted to do was uh, get uh, Brian to mention that Pete, you got recognition from District Governor Trudy. Um, uh, so, uh, he was recognized for his efforts with the. Uh, Korean chapter. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Oh, not a chapter, a club. Okay. It's, it's, I mean, you know, it's, this has been to me a very slow process with them. Um, I've been involved with uh, starting probably three or four other clubs, and we've always been able to put them together a lot quicker. Um, some of the, I think part of the issue is the language. There, there's a language barrier there. I don't speak Korean and the president don't speak English very well, but the lady that I'm w working, I have more contact and communication with, uh, she does speak English. So, um, right now I'm just waiting on her to get back in touch with me and let me know that they have opened up a bank account and they have their uh, their uh, infernal revenue number. Uh, the, the point was that uh, District Governor Trudy recognized you for your efforts. No, yeah, that was nice of her. Yeah. So that, that yeah. is there any other district news that we should know about from Saturday? They, uh, and I know you were in your car driving around that day. I actually see you on my screen here. But um, they had a silent auction. I did not hear how much uh, they made off of that. I think they only $685. had. $685. How much? $685 or something. There was some nice things on there, but I don't know if it sold. But there was some nice, nice stuff. Yeah. That's not bad because I think there was only like twelve or fourteen items, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, we had a 
past international, I think his past international director, maybe a current international director that was there. And uh, he gave a very good talk. Um, and um, but I think you may, I don't know if you recorded that or not. But, I, did, uh, I didn't record it. The, you know, the, uh, the district recorded it. I'm sure they'll make it available to us. Yeah. Uh, so. But I had, I did, I was not, I was out of the car when, uh, when during lunch when he gave us when he gave his speech. Yeah, um, he's a very good speaker. I can't remember all of what he said, but he's a very good speaker and and uh, <clears throat> you know a lot of good information there. I tell you what, I mean, I I sat here for four hours pretty much listening to that. I would much rather be there in person than sitting here watching it on, you know, on a screen. They did have some issues getting started because they couldn't get uh, uh, District Governor Trudy's microphone to work. So you couldn't hear a thing she said. All we could do is watch the screen with all the people kind of getting up and moving around. And uh, I think there was like 36 people on the Zoom screen and, and maybe... 55 or 60 people at the meeting itself. So about 80 people, I guess you could say, probably turned out maybe 90. All right. So we to the point we can adjourn? I, I, Go ahead, Brian. I think so. I, I think so. Uh, I, I think it's ice cream time. Uh, for uh for pete um looks good to me I, I, think motion, we, I, I motion we adjourn second i think we just set a record for a board meeting <laughs> 30 minutes good job wow. all right guys well, hope everybody has fun this week thanks for, thanks for uh attending tonight and uh hey give me a call when you get back all right we'll do all right, guys. Have a good week. I'll be in here. All right. All right. Bye. Later. Bye, Tom, boy. Thanks, Tom. Oh, am I going to get the seat on? Oh, God. There so he what's, is. What's be <laughs> Once everybody got off, now I can see you. What's that behind you this time? Last time you had a bridge over the Intercoastal. Now, what's what's supposed to be behind that, you now? That's that old um, uh, antique store in Brazelton, the big one. I think. The, oh. Yeah, I got I got it. I thought that uh, I forgot that it's a mirror image on my end, so I turned the photograph around, so, it's, <laughs> so it doesn't look right to you. Right, right backwards. Me now, yeah. <laughs> Mm, yeah, well, cool. Well, you had a good have a good evening. You too, Don. We'll talk to you later. All right. Yeah. Bye bye.